We're at the 11th Annual Muscle Car and Corvette National Show here in Rosemont, which is suburban Chicago. It's uh, whew, our 11th Annual Show entering the second decade. What happens here? So much. Where do we start? I'll tell you what, we're standing here in front of one of the one, one of my favorite cars of the show, it's, it's uh, pretty spectacular. It's the original Don Nicholson built Super Cat Coca-Cola Cougar. It's right at the front of our Ford and Mercury Total Performance display, which is uh, this year's red carpet display is what a lot of people like to call it. We, we pride ourselves in having a little bit of something for everybody. So the main thing is we don't ever want to be pigeonholed as being just a Chevy show or just a Ford show or just a Mopar show. But I do rotate between the big three with what we call a red carpet display. And as you can see, Ford and Mercury are getting a spotlight this year. When we launched the show in 2009, it was somewhat of a hard sell. The concept of doing a mixed make muscle car show catering to higher end cars and specialty cars with a real emphasis on factory stock cars was kind of never been done. People kind of dabbled with it a little bit here and there, but we we're the ones that kind of try to establish something with a vast amount of cars, over 500 cars in one building, um, with something for everybody brand wise. What we found now, as I said, at the beginning it was a bit of a hard sell mostly to get collectors to come in because as, as we all know if you have a real valuable high-end car you're not necessarily going to go to a lot of shows for a lot of reasons it's rough on cars to trailer them or drive them whatever the case may be to have them shipped a lot of times you don't want to take your baby out of your own collection and uh, now what's happened is we've seen many collectors who come in with a friend who's shown a car and then they come here as a spectator and say wow i got to bring my car so we're, we're getting a lot of referrals through other people that have shown with us. A lot of collectors that show with us year after year, but with different cars. I can tell you this, as I say, we rotate between the big three, so next year General Motors gets the spotlight. Now let me also emphasize, I, I say that with, the, with our red carpet display, but for example, this year we have an A12 Mopar room with close to 30 Super B and, and Roadrunner six pack and six barrel cars. We have our Buick 69 GS special collection with 10 of the finest 69 GSs you'll ever see. Um, our, our wing car, aero car anniversary display with 20 Superbirds and Daytonas, including the Richard Petty Superbird and the Ramo Stott car and the K&K &K car. I mean, you know, the, the best of the best, the real deal cars. These aren't tributes or clones. And I, I always try to get these cars that haven't been shown very often in public. A couple of takeaways that I can show you. Obviously, hands down, the biggest crowd we've ever seen. And I, I always say, I never look at spectator gate numbers till the show's over because building up to the show, I figure I'm gonna give it 110%. There's a certain point where you know you can't do any more. It's gonna be what it is and you accept that. And that's actually kind of a sigh of relief. It's like, okay, let's let it happen. Um, I can say, just from a personal observation and knowing how crowds are and that type of thing, I've never seen our show have a serpentine snake lineup that continued for close to two and a half hours to buy tickets and uh, the lobby was full, we had them all over the place, and it was just non-stop people coming in. So uh, that was just spectacular. It's uh, beyond my wildest dreams. I, I like to say, if I, you're gonna call me anything, I'm a Mopar guy. So several years back, I was, um, we, had, we had done the Hemi E-body convertible collection. I kind of prefer the B-bodies. But the 70 Roadrunner, people say, what's your favorite car of all time if you could order anything? And I'll tell you exactly right down there. I could name the option codes. But the closest thing that I know of that is here is actually a far more valuable car, which is a plum crazy purple 70 Roadrunner convertible, but it's got a Hemi under it. Gentleman is from Saskatchewan. In talking about that car, he mentioned that he was also in correspondence with the owner of the other two 70 Hemi Roadrunner convertibles. Now they built four. One of them was destroyed, believed to be in 1972. So that means three of them exist. All three of them are here. So that, that to me was just like being a 70 Roadrunner guy, it's a holy grail. We are 
basically a two-person operation. Of course, I have my partners, but as far as logistics and putting the show together, the physical end, the stuff that's not so fun. 90% of that is handled by my wife, Vicki. We, we work out of our home. We do not have a corporate office. I do not have a secretary. She handles all the stuff that isn't necessarily so fun. Paperwork, mailings. My son is very active in maintaining our website. He created our website. And, um, you know, phone calls, emails, networking. That's what we do every day. Show week, when we get here, it's a logistic nightmare to get into this building. So we're working, our team is phenomenal. Uh, most of our team is made up of real car people. They get it. And getting back to the original question of what happens on show day, it's coordinating the staff and making sure that everybody is doing what they need to do, getting assistance when they need it. I'm working with the Rosemont Police Department, who are tremendously supportive of what we do. We, uh, we bring a lot of people to the community, as you can see. We've got participants who have joined us from 42 different states, um, Saskatchewan, many, you know, several provinces of Canada, Calgary. The day-to-day -day operation, once we get the unveilings done, which this year started at 9.30 and ended at 1.00, um, once that happens, we kind of shift into overdrive, and then I, for me, I just like to watch, see the people interacting, you know, spend as much limited time as I have to say hello to people that I see once a year. But um, and this year, I got to tell you, the amount of children here, I'm very, very big on kids' activities because to me, the future of the hobby depends on us bringing in the young people. And by young, I don't just mean 17 or 18. I mean young, young, six, eight, ten got to plant the seed yeah. and it, to me it was really rewarding, rewarding to see so many families bringing the kids in and you know as I say we want to plant the seed early so we can keep this hobby going. You're going to want to go to our website which is mccacken.com of course that's a very shortened abbreviation for Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals and you know as I say we're always the weekend before Thanksgiving. Um, plan on being here at least the next decade or more as long as everybody uh, is willing and interested in joining us and uh, you know plan again we'll, we'll be back here Thursday uh, 2020 for uh, for the uh, 12th annual Boston Car and Corvette Nationals.